I'm Terry Barton, and I'm pleased to talk to you today about how we use DNA in genealogy. If you recall from your basic biology, that each person gets 46 chromosomes, half from their mother, half from their father. We aren't interested in most of those. We're actually interested in one, the Y chromosome, that a man gets from his father, who got it from his father all the way back to Adam. If there were no mutations, I would have the same as my dad and as Adam and as every other man that ever lived. The good news is that the, there are mutations that occur at random and in a predictable way so that we're able to sort the men in our world into genetic branches, into genetic families, and to identify which ones share a common ancestor and even to estimate how long ago that common ancestor would have lived. Great for genealogy, a brand new tool. Five years ago, I got involved when a man came onto an internet discussion group and said, hey, I think I have found someone who will do DNA testing on us and do it for free as a study. Is anybody interested? <laughs> Guess what? we were interested. We immediately got a large group of Barton men together and then found out can't have it for free but Leo did negotiate us a good price and that was the beginning of what is now the 20th largest surname project in the world, Barton DNA. What have I learned? Well I've learned that most of the Southern Bartons are my cousins but I don't know how they're my cousins. That's where I'm still stopped and frustrated because we found 26 different families and we don't know how to tie them together. We just know that they are together genetically. Two of the families actually have paper trails back to Lancashire, England. So one of the frustrations that I had, where did my Bartons come from before the US, is probably answered because the Barton family in Lancashire goes back to the 1200s and has owned land and been an important part of that community for a long time. I also learned that the nurse, Clara Barton, the one that started the Red Cross, isn't my cousin. When I was a boy, I was told, we're related to Clara. You just have to go back across the Atlantic and our families come together. Not according to the gen DNA and the genetics. I also was told as a boy that those Northern Bartons are not related to us. Well, that turned out to be true. We have found three separate Barton families in the North, and they're not related to each other or to my Southern Bartons. I had so much fun. I felt like I was learning so much with this that I said, I wonder what it would do for my mother's family. The Hodges. I was also interested in Hodges because this was the first of my families to dead end. It dead ended in a teenager running away from home and going to Texas. He told everyone his name was Richard Allen Hodges. He told him an exact birth date and he said he ran away from Tennessee. We even have a story associated with his running away. So through the decades, my ancestors, who were also interested in genealogy, went back to Tennessee. They could not find Richard's family. So when we started the project, I was asking myself, was Richard really a Hodges, or did he make up that name? Or maybe he didn't run away from Tennessee. Something didn't fit. Well, first two results back in the Hodges project matched. My uncle and another man. Both traced back to an earliest ancestor named Richard, one generation apart, one state apart. And so my first answer was, yeah, Richard really was a Hodges. And I was pleased because that's a name that my mother's rather attached to. Over time, we've developed and improved on our knowledge of this branch of the Hodges, and I now know that a Hodges man tracing back into South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee is probably going to be one of my genetic cousins 
and I should be looking to South Carolina and not Virginia when I look for my ancestry earlier than Tennessee. I also found out through the luck of who tested that my Hodges probably come from Kent, England because one of the paper trails goes back there in the mid-1600s. These worked out so well that I thought, well, what other families, what, what else can I do? And so I got involved with my mother's Weisinger family. And you can guess the name Weisinger gets spelled a lot of different ways. And out of the seven men in the project, I think we have five or six spellings. The other man and I that started the project both thought, I want to be related to Manfred because Manfred traced his paper trail back into the 1100s in Austria. Guess what? Neither one of us are related to Manfred genetically. So we don't have that wonderful paper trail that Manfred does. But I did find out that the other Weisinger family that lives in the, lived in the Dutch Fork of South Carolina at the same time as mine is a perfect match for my Weisinger. And this gives me another four generations of ancestry because mine had stopped with the ship that my ancestor came over uh, from the old world where the other paper trail went back another four generations into Germany. I was very pleased to get that extra ancestry. I had so much fun with this and these families that I said, I bet I can do some more. And so over time, I have started literally dozens of projects for my ancestral families. Some of them I'm having some very good success with. Others are still waiting for the first person to join in because some of these names are, I think of them as old fashioned. I guess that there's just not so many descendants that survive through on those names. Along the way, I realized that not only was what I was doing helpful to me, but it helped others and that I was pretty good at it. So I started setting up surname projects for other families that weren't even my ancestral name with the idea I would start them, I would manage them until the people who were ready to run them would come along and I would help them learn how to do it and gradually turn them over. And I've turned that into a business called worldfamilies.net. And in addition to running the surname projects, we also com collect and compile all the useful data that we can find that is helpful to the surname project managers and to the people who are participating in them. So, what am I doing with my time these days? DNA and genealogy, and I'm loving it.